Hello guys, uh, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, myself, Abhinash, I have joined in as in Bangladesh. Okay, so we're going to solve the sample question paper. Okay, so we're going to do some bio questions. So uh, I guess uh, my screen is visible to you people. Hello? Hello? Um, am I audible now? So we are doing the sample questions. So please pay attention. Let's move on to question number 21. Okay, so uh, let's start with question number 21 section. A, um, draw a diagram on human female reproductive system and label the parts which produce an egg and uh, the fertilization take place. So uh, can you guys uh, imagine like um, where does um, where the production of the egg happens in the human female reproductive system? Can anybody answer me that question? Ovary. Yeah, correct. That's correct. Ovary. So here we need to draw the diagram of the ovary. And plus the whole female reproductive system, including the uterus and the vaginal part and the fallopian tube. Okay. And can anybody answer where does the fertilization take place? Yes. Yeah, that's correct. It's fallopian tube. Okay. Now let's move on to the next question. The B. Twenty one B. A uh, list to bacterial diseases which are transmitted sexually. So can anybody answer me this question? The two bacterial diseases which are transmitted sexually. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, so with Obeduct was the correct is also the correct answer. Yeah, uh, two bacterial diseases which are transmitted sexually. Yeah, syphilis and gonorrhea. That's correct. Chlamydia is also correct. Okay, so as for two, you have given me the answer, that's correct. Now let's move on to the next question. So uh, what are contraceptive devices and give two reasons for adopting a contraceptive device in humans. So uh, can anybody answer me this? What are the contraceptive devices? Property that's correct. Anything else? Yeah, that's correct. Property, condom, and cervical cap. So, uh, why there's a need of adopting these contraceptive devices? Can anybody tell me? So, Tanishka told me devices that are used by humans to prevent or terminate pregnancy. Okay, so. Terminate pregnancy is in the, on the later stages, but it's mostly used for in order to prevent pregnancy. So one of the most easiest way is the use of condoms and then comes uh, for the vaginal contraception, the copper tea, cervical cap and all. So, um, yeah, Tanishka, yeah, that's condom and IOCDs are correct. So, uh, next move, let's move on to the upper questions. So, going to the 21A, distinguish between cross pollination and self pollination. And mention the site and the product of the fertilization in la la. So uh, I will uh, ask <clears throat> single one of you uh, at least to give one one point each. So um, let's start. So um, distinguish between cross pollination and self pollination. Uh, any one of you can start with giving me a single distinguish point. Yeah, so Rishikesh uh, has done cross transfer of pollen between two different plants and self pollination is transfer of pollen in same plants. That, that's correct. So uh, Rishikesh, can you give me a few examples for cross pollination and self pollination? Have you know any plants? Uh, it's not in the question, but I will ask like if you remember any of these plants name, it will be good. That's correct, hibiscus has a self-pollination and cross-pollination. Uh, yes, that's correct. So basically, uh, Tanchika, um, 
Tanishka, sorry. Tanishka, you told me cross pollination is transfer of pollen grains to stigma of other another flower. Uh, it is used mostly by unisexual flowers. So yes, uh, what happens is it totally depends on the carriers. So if the passage of the pollen grain of the same flowers versus the stigma of the dark flower itself, then it's called self pollination. But if the pollen grains are like transferred to the another flower. So it becomes cross-pollination of different plants. Okay, so coming to the second part of the same question. So mention the site and the product of fertilization in flower. So yeah, you have already mentioned it, the pollen grain to stigma of the another flower. So it's already answered. Yeah, then she goes, that's correct. So that's answered. Now coming to the 21B, draw a label diagram. So draw a label diagram of pistol showing parts of stigma style ovary and female germ cell. So uh, when you go through the female, uh, the reproductive systems on plants, uh, you can actually see there the flower diagram. So, where you can draw it and label. So I think uh, you can do it by yourselves. So coming to question number 20, okay. So B, explain the two methods to determine the age of fossils. So which are the two methods to determine the age of fossils? One of them uh, was... Slabbers. Okay, okay. So is the question number 20, A is also out of syllabus? Evolution in organisms. Okay. So uh, moving to question number 21, uh, 22, 22, uh, draw a label diagram to show the following parts in an embryo of a PC. So so uh, you can refer the textbook for the diagram as such. That is uh, page 135. Okay, figure 8.9. Okay, so discussing the next question, um, it's a kind of case study type. So a student observed a permanent slide showing a sexual reproduction in Hydra. So draw label diagram in proper sequence of the observation that must have been made by the student. So name the process of reproduction also. So kindly uh, read this question once and try to understand and try to answer the question as such. So what will be the process of reproduction here? What kind of reproduction it is?
Oh, yeah, that's correct. Regeneration of body. Uh, regeneration or uh, Rishikesh is for an area. Okay, so mostly those organisms. Yeah. Hydra, in case of Hydra, it is budding. In case of Hydra, it is budding. Uh, there's a small bud which goes out and then it uh, gets it into a new form. So for example, um, like what, for better example, if you can go to the tuber root of potato and all where a single bud develops into a new plant. Okay, regeneration is for uh, planaria and other organisms where uh, the organisms are cut into half or something and then it regenerates into two other organisms. Okay, so coming to the next question, question number. I'm sure it only planaria and hydra it is mentioned in the textbook. Okay, uh, I think you're kind of like, okay. Uh, Tanishka, the thing is, uh, budding is also a form of regeneration. Yeah, budding is also a form of regeneration. But here the case is, instead of uh, the single part, instead of a uh, single part, gets formed into new organism, a small part in the form of bud is, which is attached to the parent organism itself. Here, the, here in the case of planaria, what happens is uh, the part is separated from the parent organism. So that's why the diet regeneration is different. Whereas budding is a kind of regeneration where the parent organism and the bud is attached. Okay, so uh, next uh, coming to the question number 23. So in the experiment to prepare a temporary amount of, temporary amount of a leaf peel to show stomata, glycerin and saffronin are used. When and why are the two, uh, when and why are these two liquids used? Can anybody explain? That's uh, question number 23. So anybody can answer this? Okay, yeah, uh, correct. Uh, that's correct. Glycerin is used to maintain the moisture. As you must be knowing that glycerin is also used in uh, moisturizing substances, uh, the cosmetics and all which is placed. Uh, one of the great moisturizer, you can say, is petroleum jelly and all, uh, which is used in Vaseline. And glycerin is also a moisturizer. Next, uh, Saffronin. So saffronin, what about saffronin? As you can, as the name suggests, saffronin, which is somewhat uh, reddish orange in color because it represents saffron color. So what is it? It's a kind of dye. Okay. So this dye you, is used to stain the cells of the leaf so that each part is visible properly. Okay. Uh, I hope you got the answer. Tanishka with glycerin to preserve moisture to for color for the clear image under the microscope. That's correct. Tanishka. So uh, now let's move on to the next question, question number 24. Question number 24. So 
first part how is the presence how is the presence of an acid tested with okay that's oh sorry that's the chemistry question Okay, so now let's come to the section C, question number 11. So uh, list in the tabular form, three differences between blood and limb. Okay, so uh, any one of you can start uh, giving me one point, the difference between blood and limb. Anyone can start. That's correct, Arushi. Blood is red while lump is colorless. Next question. Anyone else? Okay, yeah, that's correct. Lymph has more concentration of WBC. Uh, this is because lymph node is also the mature maturing site for lymphocytes. Specifically, which lymphocyte can anybody tell me? Yeah, I need one more. It's mentioned three. And the question also answer to my question. So lymph node is also a mature lymph site, maturation site for which type of lymphocyte? Okay, so the third point it is that the blood contains more proteins while lymph contains less proteins. Okay, and the red color of the blood is due to the hemoglobin, as everyone must be knowing it. Okay, so and one more point is that blood is a combination of connective fluid, connective tissue such as platelets red blood cells, white blood cells, plasma. Whereas lymph, it's an extracellular fluid consisting of plasma, protein, and white blood cells. Okay, uh, coming to the next question. Question number 12 of section C. Uh, why does the flow of signals in a synapse from, ex from axonal end of one neuron to the dendritic end of another neuron take place, but not in the reverse direction? Can anybody explain me? 
Yeah. Yes, uh, can anyone explain me? No, it is not in syllabus. Okay, yes. this one is also not in syllabus. Okay, fine. So uh, what about the next question? How does the creation of variation in species promote survival? This is also there or not there? Not there. Okay, food chain. Question number 14, what is food chain and why is the flow of energy in an ecosystem unidirectional? Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, it's it's also not there. Okay, I'm not getting any response when it's there in the syllabus, so I want the answers. Question number 14, question number 14 of section C. What is food chain? Okay, anyone else? Why is the flow of energy in an ecosystem unidirectional? Okay. A chain of successive consumer. Arushi, uh, you wrote down food chain is a chain of organisms which are interdependent for food. Okay, uh, that is kind of like interdependent. Yeah, that's correct. Somewhat correct. But the actual definition which goes around life we need to explain, it's actually sequence. Okay the chain of events in which uh, one consumes the another in order to transfer the energy. Okay, so that's how a food chain goes. So if I mean to say, uh, if I want to say how the food chain is, uh, like what is food chain? Answer to that question will be food chain is a sequence of organisms in which one consumes the another, the other to transfer the energy. So uh, one, for example, there might be producers which are grass, then there is deer or mouse which are herbivores. Okay, and then above that, that will be a carnivore that might be a lion, which is a tertiary organism. Okay, so uh, the second part of the question is why is the flow of energy in, in, in an ecosystem unidirectional? Okay. Uh, yeah, Aruchi, that's correct, but I need, uh, like, I wanted the keyword as sequence and transfer of energy in the food chain. Okay, so need to remember the keywords next time. 
Rishikesh, you wrote down a chain of successive consumers. Okay, so can anybody else answer me why is the flow of energy in an ecosystem unidirectional? Or if can I say that the flow of energy in an ecosystem is always unidirectional? So because energy when like, consumed cannot be given back. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, who is this? So this is Sovet. Okay, Sovet. Yeah, that's correct. So and uh, the energy which we are consuming, it cannot be given back, but it can always be lost in the environment through heat and other forms. Okay, after that too. So Tanishka also wrote down the correct answer. Okay, yeah, Tanishka also wrote down the correct answer in terms of autotrophs. That's also correct. So next part, yeah, next part. Why should, uh, the national parks are there in the syllabus, right? Yes. So why should national parks be allowed to remain in their pristine form? So this is the question nowadays. Most of you people must be hearing the news, the national parks, centuries, and all. And we have our own national park in our Mumbai city itself, the largest national park within the city limits. Okay. So can anybody answer question? Uh, answer to the question. Can anybody give me the answer to the question? Why should national park be allowed to remain in the pristine form? Yeah, if you want to answer, you can uh, unmute yourself and go ahead with that. If you know, tapping is taking time. Okay, this is not also, this is also not in the syllabus. Okay. What about the next part, question number 15? Mention the environmental consequences of increasing the demand of energy and list four steps you would suggest to reduce the consumption of energy. This is there in the syllabus, right? Are you guys holding the copy of syllabus with you? And there are almost so there are almost twelve participants and. None of you are answering about the question being in the syllabus or not. The question 15 is out of syllabus. Okay. Okay, uh, so let me go through the paper once again.
Okay, so mostly we have covered all this question, but are you guys ready to answer a few questions which I think will be relevant to the topics which we have discussed today? Okay, uh, will you be able to answer? Try to answer the questions, okay? I guess the chapter how do organisms reproduce? Reproduction of the organisms is there in the syllabus, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, can I ask you questions, uh, which is not in this question paper, but very on my own. So try to answer these questions, okay? Okay, uh, can anybody explain me what uh, fission is in reproduction? Single term, if you can say uh, cell division. Cell division is a type of fission. Okay, we call it as binary fission. Can anybody give me an example of the organisms which divide through binary fission? Amoeba, Plasmodium. There are many bacteria also which divide through binary fission. Okay, uh, then there is malaria. Okay, uh, just out of the syllabus question, just for example, Leishmania, that's correct. Uh, out of the syllabus question is, malaria is a virus or a parasite or a bacteria? Parasite. Parasite, that's correct. Okay, whereas dengue is? Virus. That's correct. Okay. So next, coming to the vegetative propagation. So vegetative propagation. Uh, if I give you an example of potato, okay. So potato have small uh, nodes in which the plant grows and put it under the soil. The small white color buds which comes out and that buds grows into a new plant. So that type of propagation, you can term it as which what type? Okay, budding, that's correct. Budding, and it falls under vegetative propagation. Okay, so mostly it is it's seen in tuber roots, such as potato. And pliophyllum. Um, okay, so uh, now I'm, pre 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 I'm sorry. Now I'm presenting you with one of the cases. Okay, just tell me uh, there's a reproduction happening. So what kind of reproduction? So here, um, I've taken, um, I put up a platform with black color soil, okay, um, like black color manure, total manure, in which in the moist and the dampened conditions, I grow up a buttons like white plants, okay? So like, for example, white plants, that's button mushrooms, which is a type of fungi. So what fungi doesn't have seeds, right? So what I have placed in the moist uh, soil that has lead to the formation of the button mushrooms. Okay, that's correct, spores, like level.
uh, do male and female reproductive system of human beings are in the syllabus? Yes. Okay. So, uh, can anybody tell me which is what is the optimum temperature at which these sperms mature? Two degree, two degree. Then, uh, two degree Celsius will froze these sperms. So one degree or two degree less than the body temperature. Uh, what is that? Thirty-five degrees Celsius. That's correct. Thirty-six degrees Celsius. Thirty-five or thirty. Is the is the thirty-six degrees Celsius in the body temperature? They may germinate at thirty-five to thirty-four. That's correct. Thirty-five to thirty-four. The usual temperature range under which the um, sperms mature is somewhere around. 30 to 30, well, like 30, in between 30 to 35 degrees Celsius. Other than that, this sperm has a tendency to um, contract, or it's not sperm, this scrotum has a tendency to contract. There's a lot of uh, like uh, freezing condition outside. The skin of the scrotum uh, contracts and that helps into. Maintain the temperature of the sodium. Okay. Uh, next, uh, which all hormones are uh, released after ovulation in female reproductive system? Yes. Uh, which all hormones are released? After ovulation, progesterone, that's correct. And estrogen, that's correct. Okay, progesterone and estrogen. Okay, can anybody tell me? When does ovulation happen? When, uh, the, after the release of a particular hormone from a pituitary gland, the ovary releases the egg, the maturation of the egg happened. So what is that hormone named as? What's the name of the hormone? Uh, Arushi, that's not the answer. So you just give this stress. The pituitary gland releases an hormone which leads to the ovulation, which signals the production of the egg to the ovary. Heard about FSH, follicle stimulating hormone? So, uh, this, uh, say whether it's true or false. Okay, so when the girl is born, it comprises of, when the girl is born, the ovary of that girl uh, have uh, like no egg at all. It's true or false? False. That's correct. Uh, it has thousands of eggs within, which are partially mature. And where does the mature, uh, where does the egg mature? What's the site name as?
in which side does the egg matures? Uh, Rishikesh, that's wrong. It's the ovary. Okay. So again, if you're taking uterus, so just like, so tell me, uh, what is the main function of uterus in the female reproductive system? Correct implantation of the zygote and providing the nourishment to the fetus through placenta. Okay, and similarly in similarly kind of similarly in what's the function of the prostate gland in male reproductive system? Set to provide a fluid medium. Was not. Uh, your voice was not clear. Set to provide a fluid medium for the. Fluid um, medium for in order to uh, sperms to swim inside the vagina. Okay, so uh, can everybody tell me the oh, egg? And the sperm, both are haploid cell or diploid cells? Yeah, the egg and the sperm, these both are haploid cells or diploid cells? That's correct, it's in haploid cells. Okay, so can anybody tell me what happens uh, when the egg is not fertilized? Okay, also, uh, if I need to give an one liner to this question, one liner answer to this question, so what happens is so, since the, yeah, the uterine wall ruptures and the X comes out of vagina as blood and mucus. Okay, that's correct. That's correct. So some another questions. So once the egg is released into the oviduct or fallopian tube, for how much long time it stays in that tube? Does anybody know this answer? For how much long? Like days or hours? Yeah, I'll finish it like, like within two, three minutes to answer these few questions. Yes, that's correct. So with it stays for only few hours. So that's around eight hours to 24 hours, but not more than that.
So within that period of time, the sperms need to fertilize the egg. And whereas once ejaculated into the vagina, the sperm stays inside the vagina for around seven days. So within that seven days period of time, if the sperm is able to swim and fertilize the egg, the pregnancy is done. Uh, so, okay, uh, we have almost done, like we have done, not almost, we have done with the topics today. So, any more questions would you like to ask me? Like, if you have any doubts? Yes, uh, any more doubts or like you need to ask me any more questions? Okay, no doubts. Okay, no issues then. Hope we meet you again. So that's it for today. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.